What is going on guys, it's Amit and you're watching DevDreamer. Welcome back to lesson 41 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the this keyword. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 41. So in this lesson then, let's learn all about the this keyword. Now understanding this in JavaScript is very important. It's a keyword that is usually associated with object-oriented programming or OOP for short. So when we write our code using objects to represent entities, that's called object-oriented programming. We'll learn more about that later. Now, there are four main contexts in which the value of this can be defined. The global object, as a method within an object, as a constructor on a function or class. We'll look at this later when we look at um, constructor functions and classes. And finally, as a DOM event handler. So let's start with the global context. If we just log the keyword this to the console, let's see what we get. So we'll say console.log and then the word this. Now in the console, we get this strange thing here called window. And if we open this up, we can see that this is an object containing all of these different properties and methods. So when we use this globally, what we get is a reference to the global window object. The window object basically represents the browser's window, so all global objects, functions and variables automatically become members of this window object. And if we take a look, we can see one of them that we've used here. Okay, we've used alert in the past, we've done something like alert, hello, and we get hello in this alert box here. So this is the same thing as saying window.alert, and it's the same thing for our console log. We can actually just say this dot console dot log. And again, that works fine. Just like we can say window dot console dot log. But because by default, we're already in that window object, we can simply omit this and say console dot log or alert or whatever. We'll look at the window object in more detail later on as part of the browser object model. For now, the main thing to take away from this example is that the this keyword represents the object that called it. And since this is declared globally, it's part of the global window object. Now let's take a look at the use of this inside of a normal function. So let's get rid of this and let's say function. We'll just call it this keyword. Take no parameters and inside the body of the function here, we'll just console log this. So here what we're doing then is we're using the this keyword inside of a function. So not globally this time, but inside of a function. So now if we go ahead and invoke this function, this keyword, once again, this refers to the window object. So here, this represents the object that called it. And since our this keyword function is a global function, it gets added to our window object. So if we go ahead and open this and scroll down, we can see our this keyword that we created right here. So that's the this keyword in the global context. As you can see, it's very rare that you would need to use this in the global context. But as mentioned, one of the main ways that this keyword relates to functions is when it's used inside of objects that we create. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, let's just paste this object in. So it's our classic object example called game. We've got three properties, name, platform, and year. And then we have this method as well called release, which basically just console logs, this game was released in year. So now if we go ahead and try to point to this release function, so we're going to say game dot release, and it's a function, so into our parentheses. In the console, we get an error. And the reason we get this error is because, as you can see, it says year is not defined. So what we need to do when we want to reference any of our object members is we need to say this dot year. Okay, and now we can see this game was released in 1991. So what happens here then is that this keyword is bound to our game object. In other words, this inside of a method, remember a method is the name given to a function inside of an object, refers to the object that it's inside of. So this is the same as saying game.year, which of course is a reference to this year here. In fact, we can see it's a reference to this game object by simply removing all this and just console logging to this keyword. So here game.release, which is a reference to this function here, we invoke it. And in the console, we see that it refers to our game object. So what we say is this is bound to our object. Just like in the previous example with the function that we created, when we console logged this from inside of that function, it referred to the object it was inside of. 
and in that case it was inside of the global window object. So that's how the this keyword works in objects. Now let's see what happens if we had nested objects, because of course you can have objects within objects. So here let's just create a, another object. So we're going to call this characters. It will be an object. And inside this we'll go for three properties called main. We'll give it the value of Sonic. Side will have the value of tails. And finally enemy will have the value of Robotnik. I'm also going to include a method inside of this nested object. That's going to be called list. And this is going to simply console log each of those properties. So we say this dot main, this dot side, and this dot enemy. Okay, let's go ahead and target that characters object. So we're going to say game dot characters and then dot list, which is a method. So don't forget the parentheses. And sure enough, in the console, we get Sonic, Tails, and Robotnik. So once again, in objects, this always refers to the object that the method is created in. So here, the list method, okay, just highlight it for you. The list method is inside of the characters object. So here, this refers to characters. And once again, we can see that by simply console logging this. And as you can see here, what we get is a reference to this characters object. Finally, let's take a look at this when using a DOM event handler. We will of course be looking at the DOM or the document object model in detail later on in the series, but I do want to start introducing you to the DOM and getting you a bit more familiar with it. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this. Let's go to our HTML file. And here I'm just going to create a button element. We'll leave it blank for a second. Let's go back to our JS file. And first of all, I'm going to create a reference or a pointer to this button. So I'm going to say const button and we're going to say document. Remember we're working with the document object model here and I'm going to say dot query selector and then in parentheses I'm going to say button. So now we can use this variable. We can say button dot text content and set this equal to click me. Okay so finally down here we're going to say button dot add event listener and the first thing we're looking for is the event that we want on this button. So in our quotation marks here, we're going to say click. So we're looking for a click event handler on this, or rather adding a click event handler to this button. And then next we need a function. So I'm going to say function. It can be an anonymous function. We don't need any parameters for this. And inside the function body, we're going to simply console log the this keyword. Okay, so that's all set up. All that's left to do now is to click the button and see what we get inside the console. Remember, we're logging this to the console. So let's click on this button. And what we get in the console is a reference to the targeted element. So when we use this inside of a DOM event handler, it refers to the targeted element, which in this case is this button. So guys, that's all about the this keyword in JavaScript. Let's go ahead and summarize. So in short, this is defined by the function execution context. In other words, this refers to the object that is responsible for executing the function. There are four main contexts in which the this value can be defined. The global context, as a method within an object, as a constructor on a function or class, once again we'll look at this later, and finally as a DOM event handler. In the global context, this refers to the global window object. In a method, it refers to the immediate object it's within, whether that's the original object, or if it was a nested object, it would be the nested object. And finally, for a DOM event handler, it refers to the targeted element. So in this example, our button element. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. For task number one, I want you to create an object called book and then give it title and author properties and also an info method. Use info to console log title by author. For task number two, I simply want you to tell me what's wrong with the following code. So here we have a user object, we've got two properties, name and age, and then we have a nested object called career, and inside that we have two properties, employer and title, and then we have an info method, which is console login something. Okay, so as always guys, pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you find that then? Let's see. So for task one then, we need to create a book object. So we're going to say const book, and we'll say assign this to curly braces, which creates an object literal. And then we need to give it title and author properties. So here I'm going to say title, and let's go for 
Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And for the author, of course, that's JK Rowling. And then finally, we need to give this an info method as well, which console logs title by author. So down here, we're going to say info is a function, give us some space. And in here, we simply want to say console.log title by author. So we'll use template literals, dollar sign curly braces. And now, how do we refer to this title property and this author property? Remember, we can't just simply say title, but rather this.title. So this.title by this.author. Let's go ahead and use this now by saying book.info. And in the console, we get Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by JK Rowling. Perfect. For task number two, we need to simply say what's wrong with the following code. So let's turn auto save off by doing file and unchecking this. Let's copy all this code and paste this in. So here then we need to see what's wrong with this code. Let's just comment this out as well. So once again, we have a object called user. Then we have a nested object called career. And inside that we have info. And then we're console logging this.name is a this.title at this.employer. Now the problem we've got here then is this refers to the object that it's inside of. So in this context, this is inside of our career object, which is the nested object inside of user. However, what we're trying to do is we're trying to reference name, which comes from the user object, not the career object. So if we save this, we're going to get undefined is a developer at Google. So this.name here is undefined. So to fix this, we can just say user.name. Let's go ahead and save. And now we get John is a developer at Google. So guys, well done on completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about the call, apply and bind methods. Call, apply and bind allow us to control and define for ourselves what the this keyword refers to. So that's definitely a lesson that you don't want to miss out on. So if you're not already, be sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell and choose all notifications so you're notified when I next upload. And of course, don't forget to comment, share and like down below. And I'll see you on the next one.